What's going on guys, Nick here and welcome back to my channel. Today as you can see I'm back in Greece in my workshop here, in this very nice and neat workshop. And uh, I'm gonna make for you a DIY benchtop power supply with adjustable voltage and current. So let me quickly clean this mess up and then we will start the process of making the power supply. So, now that my pens is clean, I'm gonna show you all the components that we're gonna need for today's project. Everything will be included inside this eBay plastic uh, black case, as you can see. And this was a cheap case that you will find in the video description if you need it, of course. And inside this I've got all the components that we're gonna need. So let me quickly take them out. So first thing as I already said, the case, the enclosure of today's project, which you can find in the video description. We've got a voltage and uh, ammeter combined. Again, all the links will be in the video description. This comes with uh, this cable for measuring the voltage and this thicker cable for measuring the current going to our circuits. Um, next thing and the most important of this build is this little guy. Uh, this is a back boost converter and it goes from I think one, one and a half volt up to 32 if I remember correctly. Uh, again, you can see all the specs and everything you will uh, everything you need for this board in the video description as well as uh, purchase links. Uh, this I think can give up to 3, amp of, uh, three amps of current so that's uh, enough for me but if you need uh, a, beefier, a beefier supply you can get a, a bigger one of these uh, boards a bigger board like this one which can provide you with uh, more current if you need it. So moving on we need, uh, we need some junction knobs, or I don't know, whatever you call them, which we will use them to connect our circuits, either by just screwing the wire in, or by using banana plugs, like this one. They will fit inside perfectly. So we need two of those, one red, of course, and one black, positive and negative leaving them aside we also need two potentiometers this one is a uh, 10k and I've got these nice blue cups um, if you want to spend a little more money uh, I recommend you to buy some uh, linear ones with uh, with 10 turns this is a normal one with uh, only one turn but if you get the one with the 10 turns, you will uh, you will get you will end up with uh, much more much more sensitive uh, potentiometers for this circuit. So we need two of those. I got a pack of five, I think, from eBay. Very cheap. All the links again one once more will be in the video description. Uh, we will also need one of these guys. This is a DC jack for powering the whole thing and we also need a small switch this is a small switch a 12 volt one it also has an LED inside which is being connected by this goldish pin here and I think that those are all the components that we are going to need so let's move on so I've made uh, a very rough sketch of laying down all the components on the on the cap of the box uh, and now I'm gonna try to stick this uh, 
I'm gonna try to stick the, the design on the actual plastic and see how it go, how it's gonna look. So, as you can see, I've uh, I've used some painters tape to tape the whole design on the plastic, and now I'm gonna use my Dremel tool and try to cut out all the necessary holes. Basically, all the square holes, like this one for the display and this one for the switch. Here is the position that I'm gonna put the voltage and current uh, potentiometers. And down here in these dots I'm gonna put the, the knobs, the, the junction knobs. And I've roughly mentioned all the dimensions, but you will find a much, best, much better version of this design down in the description box. So let's let's jump into the cutting. So here's my Dremel tool. Let me show you how it's done. You need to be very careful with these things because these discs can break fairly easy. So let me cut the holes. First cut, as you can see, is I would say is very clean. But again, we can use some sandpaper or sandblock and sand everything down to be perfect. Let me quickly finish this. So if you've reached this point, you can see that I've cut almost all the way around. Now I can use a small uh, screwdriver and just snip it off. Doesn't need too much force. If you can't go it if it can't go easily, then you need to grind it a little bit more. So first first hole is done. Maybe not perfect, but for me it will do the job. By the way, if you know any better ways to cut a square a square hole into aluminum, plastic or metal, whatever, just comment it down below because I'm looking for a, a better way to do it than with uh, the Dremel. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna do the other one real quick. So here it is. Now we're gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use my drill, as well with the right size drill bit, to open up this little, these two holes, these four holes actually. But before we do this, I'm gonna measure the diameter of these things. This one is 5 millimeters, so I need a 5 millimeter drill for this ones. And the potentiometers are, I think those are 5 as well. Let me double check. Oh, these are 7 actually. So we need a 5 and a 7. Everything is now ready for the components to be mounted. The four holes, the four round holes and the two square ones are done. So now I think I can take off the design and now we can see all the damage that we've made. But it doesn't end here, we need the sand block. Let me find mine quickly. So I'm lucky enough to have uh, two different sizes. This one is uh, a much harder one than this one. So we firstly do it with the hard one. But if there are some very sharp edges like this one, you might use a sharp knife. Of course you need to be careful when doing this. And just grind off as much material as you can to make it as neat as possible. So I've managed to successfully cut the holes, as I mentioned before. Uh, now, if yours uh, don't quite fit, if your components don't quite fit, 
you can just use your Dremel and just grind a little bit more material off or you can uh, use a knife like this one but be very careful and make uh, very very small moves and cuts so you won't damage uh, if something goes wrong you won't damage the whole the whole box now if you manage to ruin your holes don't worry just grab another box and start start all over let me show you that we we get a successful and successful clip here from the components i would say this is a success let let me try the switch as well again it's not perfect but for handcrafted i would say it's fairly successful now another another thing that i forgot to mention it would be very good to use a larger drill bit from than these than these holes and uh, just counter sunk it so you will so you won't need to cut the excess material by using a sandpaper or or the knife. So let me let me do that real quick. So another thing as you can see is done. Now let's let's put the the potentiometers and the two knobs. So I'll start with the knobs. Both of them are now done, as you can see, if my camera would focus, okay, there we go. The switch as well. Now let me do the pots. So let me quickly put the pots as well, the first one. So this is how our front panel is gonna look like, I don't know for you but I seem to like it and this is the, the back side, the view of the back side. So before we jump into the wiring of the whole process we need to mount one more component and that is the DC jack. So we also need to mount this DC jack on the uh, on the box, and uh, I would like to mount it on the back back side of the whole box. I would say either of these two corners. So let me do this real quick. So this is how our project is looking so far. Uh, this is the DC jack, display, the potentiometers, switches, and the knobs. So I was editing the footage of today's video guys and as you can see it's already getting way too long again since I wanted to show you the whole procedure of making this power supply. I'll end this part here and part 2 will be up very soon. If you have any questions so far, feel free to leave them down in the comment section, leave a like if you liked my workshop in Greece and if you wanna see more stuff from there, and subscribe to my channel to get notified when a new video is posted. Thanks for watching guys!